Welcome to The Avenue. We're so honored that you're joining us online today for this special message. If you haven't already, be sure to turn on your notifications and subscribe so you'll receive alerts each time we upload new content. Throughout today's message, take notes. If something speaks to you specifically, be sure to share that using hashtag Avenue Morristown on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. Wherever you find yourself today, know that there's a God that loves you and a church ready to link arms with you. If you want more information about The Avenue, be sure to click the link below. Let's join in now. Christmas story, we're going to read Luke chapter 2, verses 1 through 7. This is what it says. In those days, Caesar Augustus issued a decree that a census should be taken of the entire Roman world. This was the first census that took place while Quirinius was governor of Syria. And while everyone went to their own town to register. So Joseph also went up from the town of Nazareth to Galilee in Judea to Bethlehem, the town of David, because he belonged to the house and line of David. He went there to register with Mary, who was pledged to be married to him and was expecting a child. And while they were there, the time came for the baby to be born, and she gave birth to her firstborn, a son. And she wrapped him in cloths and placed him in a manger because there was no guest room available for them. I've titled this message today, write down real quick, What a Christmas. What a Christmas. Anybody ever had a mess at Christmas time? What a Christmas. Father, thank you. Thank you for your word. That your word became flesh and dwelt among us. Thank you, Jesus, for who you are to us. You truly are our Savior. God, thank you for every person that's with us and online. God, we give this time to you. Lord, will you change lives through the power of your word today. Encourage, set free, save in Jesus' name. Come on, somebody say a big amen. 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 You may be seated. What a Christmas. What a, what a Christmas. And so I have a, um, a new animal to our family that came in May, April, somewhere around then. We got a new dog. And he's a, he's a golden doodle, and his name is Duke. And so I want to show you a picture of, of my dog, Duke. Yeah. Oh, is how I was not feeling this past week. Um, I, love, I love animals, and I love, I love my dog, and this is a cute picture. But I can tell you this, he was a mess this week. We had um, a tree that has an ornament on it, and well, multiple ornaments, but one particular ornament is this ornament that is a styrofoam ball, but you don't see the styrofoam. Instead, it's covered in hundreds of sequins, okay? Covered in sequins, and here's the deal. All of those sequins are attached to this styrofoam ball by little pushpins. So there's hundreds of pushpins. Well, Duke decides to get this ornament and shred it, eats the styrofoam, needles and sequins everywhere. It, it, I have no idea how many needles he ate, all this stuff. So we kind of freak out in the moment. My son sends me a picture and says, um, this just happened. And I went, what? And I called the vet immediately and said, hey, my dog has probably just ingested several needles and told him the same thing I just told you. And the vet said, I, we need you to go to the store immediately and get as, as much wet dog food as this dog will eat without throwing up. And for the next two or three days, feed him so much without him puking. This is what they said, that he has big poop. I'm like... Big poop. Let him eat to where he has a full belly all the time and that he is just pooping the mess out everywhere. And, and I'm like, this is exciting. And they said, we can't do anything until we know if, he's, if those needles are like cutting him on the inside. You'll know in his poop if there's blood. And I'm like, so great. I get to feed my dog for the next three days as much food as he possibly can handle and then go out and dissect poop. This is wonderful. They said, oh, by the way, he has to be in your sight 24-7 for the next three days. And I'm like, even better. So Duke has been rolling with me everywhere that I go, and I'm having to watch his poop. And when he goes and looking at it, going, yep, that looks like poop. And it's just, it's great. So finally, we're past that. And I thought, man, what a, what a, what a Christmas, <laughs> you know? He, you ever dealt with some messes at Christmas time? What a, what a Christmas. And, and so just like in Luke chapter 2, it's, it's a mess. Like this story, this is not a grown woman we're talking about, church. 
Mary is a young lady in her teens and very pregnant. Very pregnant, and now they're traveling about 100 miles to Bethlehem. Pregnant. Very pregnant. Like, this would have taken them um, several days to travel. Now, you think of that and go, oh, that's not so bad. No, no, they didn't have a nice truck. They didn't have a nice SUV. They didn't have a hybrid. Probably riding on some sort of animal. Through the desert, the wilderness, unpaved roads, hillsides. Pregnant, ladies. Did I mention she's pregnant? And when they get to Bethlehem, she starts having contractions, and there's no vacancies at any of the hotels, none of the Best Westerns, none of the Holiday Inns, none of the Hiltons available at the time. No rooms. So they find a cave with wild animals. Church, this is not a sweet Hallmark movie inside of a luxurious hospital suite where she's handed a baby that already looks to be six months old with her hair fixed. Y'all know the movies I'm talking about. The lady just has a baby and they hand them a toddler. And you're like. And the baby's like. Hair fixed. And that's not real. This young lady is with her man giving birth to a baby on a mountainside next to a field of sheep. No epidurals. No pillows. No ice to chomp on, ladies. Just rocks and dirt. And maybe if she's lucky, a little bit of grass. Nothing about this moment screams at me, silent night, holy. I look at this story and go, ah! <laughs> Come on, look at your neighbor and say, what a Christmas, what a Christmas. And today, we, we look at Christmas and see presents and lights and movies and parties and matching flannel pajamas. I've seen y'all men. I've seen you rocking them match, matching flannel pajamas. You're, I, I, I want to see the conversation when your wife brings home the matching flannel pajamas. And you're like, we're taking these pictures. You're like, no, I ain't wearing that. And you're like. <laughs> we, we see Christmas as this holiday that we like to celebrate the mess out of. And a lot of times it's easy for a lot of us. But why? Why? It's because we're living on the other side of the cross. And we now know the power of this miraculous event and how it changed the world. But in the moment, church, it was a mess. We read the story in Luke chapter 2. We, we read it today with sweet music and candles cuddled up in a blanket that gives us the warm fuzzies. And we're like, oh, the Christmas story in those days, Caesar Augustus. And oh. But this was a mess. From the outside looking in, we think it's sweet, but when you pick it apart, it was a mess, which leads me to my first of two points this morning, which is this. Number one, write this down. What you see is not always what you get. What you see is not always what you get. Verses 3 and 5, it says, everyone went to their own town to register. So Joseph also went up to the town in Galilee and Judea to Bethlehem, the town of David, which because he belonged to the house and the line of David. He went there to register with Mary, who was pledged to be married to him, was expecting a child. From the outside looking in, it would be easy for us to say, here's this young couple traveling to their hometown to simply fulfill their responsibilities as citizens. But you need to see that there's so much more going on here than just sweet old Joseph and Mary. This is a stressful moment for Joseph and Mary. And with just these first three verses, the Lord showed me something that applies to us today and how we can find ourselves in this text. And here it is. There's so much more going on in someone's life than what you see. You never know what someone is dealing with. You never know what the people on your row have been dealing with in life. This is one of the reasons why you should always be careful with how you treat people. Other than the fact that people should always see the love of God in you and how you treat people. But you should always be careful how you treat people because you have no idea what they've been struggling with or what they've been battling. This past week, Melissa and I and Judah, we, we went shopping for the family and Christmas shopping. It's the first time we've been able to do that this, this season. So we went out just having a good time with each other. And, and while we were out, we ran into two people that we hadn't seen in a couple of years. And, uh, you, you know, you, you do the whole thing of like, hey, you know, how you doing? It's, it's good to see you. You all know the conversation. 
you know, I haven't seen you in so long, and how's so-and-so, and they're asking about the kids, and back and forth, and then, then, then something happened. Like, one of them just looked at us and said, it's been a really rough year. And in and, and a moment, she, she just began to tell us what's been going on. It's been rough, y'all. I ain't gonna lie, it's been rough for her. And she, right there while we were shopping, just tears coming down her face, and then the friend that she had with her was there to encourage her and comfort her and walk this season out with her, and now they're both crying, and here we are hugging each other, and right there while we're shopping, we start praying with each other. I mean, isn't that what we're supposed to do? You never know what somebody is dealing with. Like, in fact, it's biblical church to care for the needs of other people. 2 Corinthians 1 verse 4 says he comforts us in all of our troubles so that we can comfort others. When they are troubled, we'll be able to give them the same comfort that God has given us. But the problem is, Avenue, a lot of the time, people have a hard time saying, Hey, I'm struggling with something. It's hard sometimes to get to a place where you'll say, I'm in a mess. I need some help. So what happens is what you see is not always what you get. We were driving home the other night, and one of my favorite things during the Christmas season to do is just to drive around and look at Christmas lights. I love that. I love to see, like, I love to see how incredible some of them are, and then, and then I love to see like how different how different some of them are. Like, there's some houses I'll go by, and I'm like, oh, that's really cool they did that and that. And there's some houses I'm like, I'm not sure what you were trying to pull off. But Merry Christmas. Thank you for your ministry. I, lo- I love to drive around. And, w- and when, when you get to the houses that have some of these classic, these are called blow molds. Um, FYI, they stopped making them back in 2017. Like, you cannot find them from a store anymore because they, unless it's just a vintage shop. Like, you want, they're hard to get. And I'll see some of these, I'm like, oh, man, those are classics now, because you still see, sometimes you'll see them in the, the nativity scene, right? You'll see the classic Mary and Joseph next to the manger with the three wise men, which is not even biblical, because that's not how it happened. Some of you are like, what? That didn't happen. Oh, boy, I saw how it happened. Oh, what? And so we'll see these, and you're like, man, those are, those are cool. And so, something, something about these, you, you, you need to realize that I, I started to look at these, that they're, they're really cool, but then, see, welcome to a pastor's world where you get illustrations from everything that you see. <laughs> And I was driving, but I began to think about this story in Luke chapter 2 and how what you see is not always what you get. And I saw these decorations and how cool they were and how fun they looked and how pretty they looked. And then it hit me. They're all fake. Plastic. And empty. Nothing on the inside looks cute and pretty and fun on the outside, but on the inside, it's empty. And here's the first of two things I want to show you about these decorations in Luke chapter 2. And here's the first one. One of the reasons why people put on a fake and plastic front is because in reality, they're empty on the inside. People, can y'all handle this today? People don't want you to see how they really are. They they don't want you to see how shallow they really are. They don't want you to see how lonely they really are. There's no substance to their character because they filled their lives with temporary pleasures to give them no eternal rewards. And for some reason, they don't want you to know that they're struggling just like you. For some weird reason, we think that we can't be real when we're dealing with something difficult in life. For some reason, we think we've got to live up to everybody else's expectation. We want people to like us, so we act in a way that's fake. We want people to like us, so we behave in ways that we think will cause people to accept us and like us. If I look like this, they'll accept me. If I dress like this, they'll approve of me. If I behave like this, they'll think I'm a good person and like me. If I post this, they'll see it and like it. If I hang out with them, if I party with them, if I drink with them, if I smoke with them, if I cuss with them, if I sleep with them. 
We put on all these different masks, hoping that other people will believe what they see, and somehow that will fill our hearts with approval, when all that it's doing is leaving our lives completely empty. We okay? 11 o'clock? Can I take it a step further? We don't want people to find out the mess we've made with our own poor decisions and our own sins. So we put on a fake plastic front thinking that we've got everyone fooled. Let me help you with something. There's no mess up that a mask could ever cover up. Luke chapter 8, 16 through 17. No one lights a lamp and then covers it with a bowl or hides it under a bed. A lamp is placed on a stand where it lights can, its light can be seen by all who enter the house. For all that is secret will eventually be brought out into the open. And everything that is concealed will be brought to light and be made known to all. It's time that we stop hiding behind a mask. It's time for you to come before God, take the mask off and say, God, what you see is not what you're getting. Check this avenue. And God says, I already know. Newsflash, you need to understand that God can never bless the fake you. And God wants you to lay down the fake front. You're miserable on the inside because you're empty. You're walking around trying to impress everyone. You're walking around trying to prove to everyone else that you've got everything put together. I need you to touch your neighbor and tell him you better get real. You better get real. I'm not going to preach to myself today. I need somebody to help me up in here. I don't mean to hurt your feelings, but the truth is no. Nobody on this earth is thinking about you as much as you think they are. But can I tell you who is? We have a heavenly father who's madly in love with you. And it's the real you that he wants to know. The real you is what he can work with. Issues and all. Mistakes and all. Secret sins and all. Jacked up and screwed up. He loves you even when you're messed up. Because when you really open up about what's going on in your life and when you fully surrender to God, that's when he can totally change your life. Oh, there's so much more available for you this Christmas season. Come on. Somebody give God a big praise in the house. Woo! Come on, turn and tell some people in your area, it's time to get real. It's time to get real. It's time to get real. Y'all ever met plastic and fake people? I can't do nothing with those people. How do you think God feels? Yeah, I know those people. Could it be that person's you? Because you're walking around with a mask trying to fake the front. Ain't got nobody messed up but you. Here's something else the Lord showed me with these Christmas decorations in Luke chapter 2. Merry Christmas, by the way. I thought she was going to tell me something. Make me feel good about myself. Here's something else the Lord showed me with these Christmas decorations in Luke chapter 2. Sometimes people put on a fake and plastic front to cover up all their pain and their hurt and their frustration. In other words, you never know what somebody is dealing with. What you see is not always what you get. It's like the Sunday morning hello. Y'all know that? You've just been giving your child the what for, the business in the car. and Say one more word, I'm going to take your life. Say one more word. Say one more word, I'll I'll end it today. I'll go to the altar and repent, but I'll take your life today. Say one more word. Say it. Say it. I dare you. I invite you to say it. That kid's walking up beside you, (laughs) and and, and then you get to the door, and everybody, hey, how you doing? Hey, God bless you. How you doing? Hallelujah. (laughs) You got a smile on your face. How are you? Blessed and highly favored, and so are you. Look, we can read right right through that. Some some of y'all today have been in a fight with your spouse on the way here, on the way here. And some of y'all during the worship have been like, I I can't wait, God, I can't wait. I got something brewing. The Lord just gave me a word for that problem. Gave me a word for my husband. Gave me a word for my wife. I'm going to let him have it. What a beautiful name it is. Beautiful name it is. I'm going to call you a name. Just wait. Just wait. (laughs) Don't fake the front. Don't act like you've never done that. (laughs) Praise the Lord. Good. We read Luke chapter 2, and we say, oh, it's the Christmas story. 
But what you see is not always what you get. This was a mess. You ever walked through a mess? You ever been in a mess? Dealing with a mess in your life? Come on, Avenue. Do we care to know what someone is dealing with? Like the person on your row may have a smile on their face, but there's tears flowing from their heart. They may tell you they're doing great, but on the inside they're falling apart. People walk in here week in and week out with the weight of the world on their shoulders. And so what we have inside of every church in America are people walking around afraid to take the mask off because they think they're in a room full of perfect people who have no issues and who have all their stuff put together. When in reality, we've got some hurting people dealing with some pain and frustrations. We've got marriages on the rocks, people dealing with addictions, people battling secret addictions, people battling secret sin, young people dealing with so much anxiety because they're trying to live up to everybody else's expectations, parents who are, who are at the end of their rope because of their children, people uncertain about their financial future, and people uncertain about their health. So we put on a mask. And walk around, fake and plastic, because we don't want anybody to see the real you. We don't want anybody to see the real issues. We don't. We want people to. You. We want you to see this, so you'll smile and not see how we're hurting. We want you to see this, so that you don't realize how how much frustration that we're in. Fake. And plastic, what you see is not always what you get. Philippians chapter 4, 6 through 7 says, Be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your request be made known to God. Let your request be made known to God. And then the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds through Christ Jesus. I've come to tell some people during the Christmas season, you're in the right place. I'm the pastor of the Avenue Church, and at times I'm a mess. You're in the right place because there's freedom in this house. You're in the presence of God, and he's inviting you to get real with him. Nothing will change for you, and nothing will get any better until you stop trying to cover up what needs to be laid down, that there's so much more that God wants to do in your heart and do in your life. Oh, it doesn't matter where you've been. It doesn't matter what you've done. It doesn't matter what kind of mess you're in. It doesn't matter what kind of mess you made. The miracle worker is in the house. The healer is available. The way maker is here. What is it that you need? Stop trying to hide it. Stop trying to be strong enough. Stop trying to fake the front and let God take control of the situation and do so much more in your life than you ever could. Come on. Somebody give God a big praise in the house. Come on. High five two people and tell them it's time to lay some stuff down. It's time to lay some stuff down. Time to lay some stuff down. But, but what do we have the tendency to do in 2021? Are we okay, 11 o'clock? Do I have time to? to I'm, I'm getting closer. But what do we do? What do we have the tendency to do in 2021? Like we're dealing with so many different issues in our world. So many different issues that I get tired of naming them all. Like, is anybody else tired of the issues? Like, I'm tired of the issues. Like, anybody, anybody else? Like, I, I, I tell people all the time, stay off the news. Stay. But every now and then, I've got to, like, just refresh myself to say, what's going on with the stupid? Like, just tell me what's going on with the stupid in the world so I'll at least know. And, and at some point, for the love of God, at some point, we're going to get smart enough that we're going to stop believing everything we hear and read on social media. I, maybe. Please, God, in 2022, knock some sense in us to stop believing everything on social media is Bible. Some of y'all have looked at social media this past year more than you've ever read the Word of God in your lifetime. Just let that fester for a minute, simmer. 
oh, God, I just wish I could hear your voice, God. I just, I just wish I could, I wish I knew your, your will for my life. And I just wish what you, 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 I could hear what you're trying to say and where you're leading me. And you haven't opened the Bible in months. Oh, wait, here, let me go. Let me just lead me. I don't make any sense. Why don't God ever talk to me? When are you going to talk to Him? When are you going to listen? He's giving you everything. Don't expect to hear the voice of God until you've gotten the Word of God. Don't. I, you're meddling now, Pastor. We're so quick. What's the first thing you do in the morning? Can I see my phone real quick? It's 11 o'clock service. I got time to do this. Nine times out of ten, 95% of the people in this room. Not me, Pastor. Alarm clock goes off. Turn it off. You stumble your way somewhere. And you pull this bad boy out. And you start scrolling through stuff. You haven't brushed your teeth. You haven't taken a shower. You ain't put contacts in. You ain't done nothing. But you already feeling yourself with so much anxiety. Because you're reading this. Or you just saw somebody's post of somebody else being hateful. And then all, all of a sudden, you started your day off with bitterness, rage, and anger. And depression and anxiety. And then you wonder why our lives are falling apart. Help me, Jesus, to stay on my notes. <laughs> and then out, I gotta go, I gotta go. For, get, put that red light right here. I love every one of you. Spread this if you want to, I don't give a flip anymore. It's 2021 going to 2022. I've seen some of the hateful things that people have said about me in this area. I ain't got nothing but love for you. We love you. We're the Avenue Church. Going to always be the church. And the gates of hell will not overcome and prevail against what God is doing here. Period. You may not like me. You may not love me. That's all right. There's a God in heaven who loves everything about you, cares for you, and so do I. I ain't got nothing. Listen, I ain't going to hate, retaliate with hate. I love you. I love you. But every person online, you're probably part of the Avenue Church, and I'm thankful for you. But listen, I'm talking to everybody. Stop believing everything you see and stop reading all this junk on the news and social media and then you walking out your life in fear and anxiety believing there's no good people in the world. Hey, there is still a remnant of people called the church that I believe that God is going to use in these last days. Oh, I wish I could find some people at the Avenue Church who's ready to step into 2022 and be what God's called you to be. Yeah, but pastor, don't you know what we're dealing with? Yeah, I know. We were made for this. This is why, this is why we're here. Welcome to the party. Everywhere you look, lives are in a mess. Our government is a mess. I love our teachers, and I love our board of directors. I love all, but our school system's a mess. I'm thankful for our teachers. Don't, don't get it twisted and do something stupid and say something weird. I'm thankful for our doctors and nurses, but the system's a mess. I, I, I'm a pastor. I can say this. I'm thankful for our churches, but we're a mess. So what do we do? We mask it. A walk around fake and plastic. Because God forbid somebody get to know the real me. And here we are. We'll come to church like this. Living fake. 
Live in plastic. Thinking we got everybody fooled. So we mask it, put a filter on it. Here's what we do. We post a cool picture and show some good stories. And people see it and like it. They comment. And, and then you think that all this is going to make you feel better. Until you realize that none of it's fixed the problem. I know i got to hurt. Are we okay? Yeah. Let me show you a picture of my son real quick. Let me show you a picture of this. Here's my son. I, lo- I, love, my, I love my kids. That's when he was like five, six years old. That's the one sane dog I have came in. That's him. So, what, what, see, we, we see pictures like this and we do the reaction like you just did. Oh, but you don't know the story behind the picture. See, what's funny about this picture to me is that it took us like 15 minutes to get this picture. One, the dog was moving everywhere. But two, the sun is shining right in Judah's eyes. Judah's got really blue eyes, and so his eyes are sensitive to the sun. And so every picture we take, he's like, hurry. <laughs> and so we took like 20 shots of this one picture, and it was never right because the dog went looking. He wasn't looking. His eye was closed. And so like when I see this picture, the first reaction is like, oh, but then I think about the story behind the picture. And see, but most of us don't know the story behind the picture. See, people see our posts and our stories on the outside, but what's going on on the inside? What's going on behind the fake smile? We put this mask on and it looks so good on the outside, but we're a mess and falling apart on the inside. What you see is not always what you get. I hope you're seeing the parallel avenue. Hey, Avenue, Jesus was born in the middle of a mess to show you that he's able to lead you out to a miracle. So you don't have to walk around with a filter on to cover up the mess mess that's going on on the inside. He's actually here to heal the hurt that life has dealt you. I need you to touch your neighbor and tell them, you don't need a filter, baby. You don't need a filter. Check this out. Newsflash. God doesn't do well with fake. He does his best work with what's real and that's what the Christmas story is all about we're in a mess and and, and instead of needing a filter that tries to hide the mess God gave us grace in the form of Jesus to clean up all of our messes and clean up our blemishes and our imperfections and heal our pain and do so much more in our lives than we could ever do on our own he came for the mess so you don't have to walk around in a mask he came for every mess every mistake every frustration to heal the hurt for all the pain he came to heal and restore and redeem and forgive so that you can walk around in freedom and confidence to say because of grace what you see is what you get come on slap your neighbor and tell them there's a miracle for your mess I feel good today I got some things off my chest. Merry Christmas. Some of y'all's New Year's resolution, I'm I'm serious. Stop comparing yourself to anybody and everybody in this world. Stop getting online, believing all the junk, and turn the news off. Well, how will I know if, no, no, listen, you be right with Jesus. When the rapture takes place, see ya. I mean, that's all that matters. Just. Just be right with Jesus, and you're good. All right? But I got to know. No, you don't. That's the problem with some of you. You think you got to know everything. I got to go. I got to go. I got to go. My wife just said yes. Here's the second thing I want you to, to learn from this story. Number two, every miracle first begins with a mess. Every miracle first begins with a mess. Real quick. While they were there, the time came for the baby to be born, and she gave birth to her firstborn, a son. She wrapped him in cloths and placed him in a manger because there was no guest room available for them. Every miracle first begins with a mess. Let me end right here with this, this video. Check this out. I married my college sweetheart, and after several years of marriage, we decided to try to have kids and we struggled for several years with infertility Um, so after several years of infertility uh, we decided to adopt and were blessed with a sweet girl and um, it was just an amazing miracle um, in our lives and an amazing blessing a couple years after we adopted um, 
In 2018, I found out that my husband had cheated and um, I immediately just went to God in prayer, um, started counseling um, with a pastor friend of ours, um, sought the Lord for healing and how God could change me. And um, I went to prayer and fasting in August of 2018 at the Avenue and asked God and sought God for a miracle. Approximately a month later, I was pregnant unexpectedly and God granted me my miracle but it wasn't exactly the miracle that I was looking for at the time I find out I'm pregnant and I think that this is it this is you know this is gonna heal my marriage this is gonna change everything and it doesn't the infidelity continued and things didn't improve over the next several months they they actually seemed to get worse. So I had the baby in May of 2019. I had to have an emergency C-section with her. And so a few weeks after she was born, I actually had an infection and had to go into the hospital. I was in the hospital for several days and I, while in the hospital because of IV antibiotics, I actually had an anaphylactic shock, which was really scary. Um, but thankfully after a few days stay, I was able to come home, but it kind of extended out my recovery time from having the baby. So I had several months of recovery in the middle of all of this, being home with a newborn and a two year old and recovering. My divorce was final, like a month later. So, I couldn't even drive for for like a couple of months um, so our divorce was final in June of 2019 and in September not long after going back to work I totaled my vehicle with both of my babies in the car with me thank God we were all okay but I broke I broke my hand and had to have surgery pretty much immediately within just a couple of days um, which put me like changing diapers and feeding an infant with a cast, shopping for a new vehicle with two kids, and trying to get back into the swing of working as a single mom. Not long after that, uh, my dad wasn't doing well, and in December of 2019, we, I actually lost my dad. Like, I felt like the walls were caving in on me. Everything was crumbling down at that time in my life. The man I most trusted most in my life, you know, had betrayed me. I lost my father, my friend, my hero. I mean, I was raised in a home where, you know, we were a Christian family. We didn't believe in divorce. Like, I got married knowing and discussing with my spouse that that wasn't an option. We didn't believe in it. and it would never be an option for us. So I found myself in a place where I thought I would never be. All that God had for me, all that God had called me to, all that He had planned for my life, basically, I felt was gone. It was useless that I, I would never be used by God again. I could never fulfill the purpose that he had for my life because now I was broken. I had failed. I had let him down. I'd let my family down. I'd let my children down. I had not, I had not fulfilled the plan the way that it was supposed to go. What do you do when you feel like your whole world is crumbling. On June 17, 2019, I arrived home from work. My wife, Sierra, um, my pregnant wife, Sierra, um, was stepping out of, out of the garage with my two-year-old son, Nolan, in the jogging stroller. 
and they were uh, going to go out for a quick run. Um, when, as I approached home, I got a ding on my phone for severe, for severe weather, and when I stepped out of the car, she knew that a thunderstorm was approaching, and she, she asked me, how long do I have? And I said, 20, maybe 30 minutes max. And she said, I'll make it quick. And at that, she, she left out of the neighborhood. And it was at that moment, or, or at that moment, um, was the last time that I saw my family. Less than a half mile down the road, they were purposely and maliciously struck by a man in a speeding vehicle, killing them instantly. Just the day before, on Father's Day, Nolan and I walked into the Avenue Church, hand in hand, and a day later, they were gone. So the storm did come. The winds blew, the rain fell, the lightning strike. And all that was left was the sound of thunder echoing in my head. From that day for the next two years, I struggled on and off with depression. I was, I was home alone. With COVID, there wasn't really a lot open or available to me outside of my home. So it was really easy to avoid interaction with other people. And because of that, it was easy to slip into a deep, dark place. On the outside, from the exterior, from everybody's point of view, everything looked fine. But inside, there was a war going on. I was drinking heavily to erase the pain. Uh, I was longing for that intimacy that I once had. And so I created a pornography addiction and I felt so guilty and ashamed. One thing I felt like I had control over was my physical well-being and because of that I got out of the house and that's when I started walking and hiking. One day I, woke, I, I approached the area where they were killed. On the side of the road, there's a little wooden cross with their names in white, Sierra, Nolan, and baby Cahoon. And I just stood there and I prayed, Lord, if it is your will, please take my life. It's not like, it's not that I wanted to die. I, I wasn't looking to step out in front of an oncoming car or a train or anything like that. I just wanted the pain to go away. You know? I just held everything in. I had a hard time seeking 
anybody else outside of close counsel only because when you have a stranger, someone you don't know, murder your family, it's, it's hard to trust anybody anymore. Even though I had prayed and fasted throughout all of this that had gone on, I had really sought the Lord and asked Him to, you know, change me and help me through all of this. And I can, and I can totally look back and see that God was always with me. He was always faithful. He was always near to me. He never left me or forsake me. Um, I, I know that he was with me, but yet I still felt so alone and so abandoned. But there came a point um, where I really began to seek the Lord and ask him for his will in my life again and ask him to use me. And um, I just began to pray the prayer of God search me and try me. And, and see if there's any wicked way in me. God, reveal anything in me that's not like you, that's not pleasing to you. And <clears throat> I really began praying that um, steadfastly and wholeheartedly in January of 2021. I feel like as a result of that prayer and, and beginning to really go after God with my whole heart and seek His will for my life again and His purpose and His calling, um, I found new places to serve and I ended up serving in the Outreach Center, which is how I met Matt. Yeah. <laughs> I got to a point where I realized I needed to put my idle time into something more productive uh, for myself um, just to be able to move forward in my grief. I started spending more time in the outreach center and Friday night prayers. This last round of prayer and fasting, it was day one where I went to the altar and just verbally laid all my burdens out to God. It was also during that time of prayer and fasting where Mandy approached me and told me that she was praying for me during this time as well. Without even knowing my entire story. It was during that time that God was working in me it was almost like my heart was hardened and, and he was kind of softening up in a way to allow me to, to be available to allow Mandy into my life. The Lord says, cast your cares upon me and, or cast your anxiety on me. And so that's what I did. My name is Matt Cahoon. I'm Mandy Reed. And on October 1st, we started dating. And God has taken each of our mess and turned it into a miracle. I'm going to ask Matt and Mandy to come up here real quick. Come on, we love, we love Matt and Mandy, don't we? <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen of the bride and groom, may I present to you for the very first time, Mr. and Mrs. McAhoo!
They have um, kind of had things on the down low for a minute. Hey, go ahead and do your thing. They've got they've gone through um, marriage counseling with us and. This past Thursday, we went up to a, a trail because Matt has found healing in nature and walking and all kind of awesome stuff. So he's taken me on a couple of those hikes and about wore me out. We went to a secluded spot and did a little ceremony. And you're married. Like, what in the world? And God has done a healing work in their life. It's, I mean, it, you're... Can you push the pause button in your life for a second? You just witnessed a miracle. Two miracles. What the enemy meant for evil, God has flipped it for their good. Can I tell you another beautiful part of this? tragedy that happened with Matt and his family with Sierra and two kids Sierra's parents are with us today and we want you to know we love you it's, it's a beautiful thing what God is God is doing come on can we just give God all the glory right here can we give God a big praise thank you God for healing thank you God for restoring Come on, one more time, show some love for Matt and Mandy Cahoon. <laughs> love you, buddy. <laughs> hey, real quick, don't ever say that God can't do something. I've seen him do it. I've watched him work miracles in people's lives. <laughs> Here's the big idea I want you to get for today. When you bring your mess to God, a miracle takes place, and you realize that there's so much more He wants to do in your life. But you've got to take the mask off and get real with Him and say, Lord, here I am. Issues and all, hurt, pain, everything, here I am. Because God can't work with what you're trying to cover up. But when you lay down what's supposed to be uncovered, he can work miracles in your life. So I'm going to pray. I'm going to pray. And then when I say amen, if, if, if you're dealing with some stuff and you need God to move in a situation, I want to invite you to come in this altar. We've got some prayer team people down here who want to pray with you, pray over you. There's no Christmas too big that God can't come in and work a miracle in your life. Father, you know every need every situation God it's in this moment right here and right now that the enemy of our faith wants to come alongside of us and tell us just to keep the mask up like everything's perfect in our lives so God in this moment will you help individuals to take the mask off and just get real with what's going on on the inside right now Holy Spirit have your way in Jesus' name, amen. Come on, if that's you and you're dealing with some stuff, will you step out from where you are and come and let us pray over you, pray with you? Come on. Yeah, thank you. Come on. Come on. It's time to get real. Come on. That's it. Come on. Come on. Yeah. If there's not an altar person ready and available, we'll get to you. Just hang tight. Come on. Yeah, that's it. That's all right. Come on. Just find a place to pray. Find a place to pray. Find a place.
Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hey, while they're still praying, and as we get ready to dismiss you, you know, there's... I love... um, I love some of the hashtags that people use when they're trying to describe their life and their situation, their posts, or whatever they put on social media sometimes. I, I, I kid around for a second, like, like when my wife posts a picture about me and, and her, and she, she doesn't, but she, she should put on there hashtag the, the most amazing husband in the world. Yep. <laughs> I, I kid around, but... What's the hashtag of your life right now? For every person here, there will be a day. There will be a day when you breathe your last on this earth, you'll step into eternity. What will your hashtag be? Hashtag heaven, hashtag hell. Which one? Because, I mean, it will happen. It will happen. So during this Christmas season, The whole entire reason why we have Christmas is because God sent his son into the world just for you. That's the whole reason. You. He came to rescue you, to make sure you don't go to hell. That's why he came. So in this moment, before we leave, every head bowed, every eye closed, if you're here today and you're not sure on where your eternity is going to be, If you're not sure of where your hashtag is going to be, hashtag heaven, hashtag hell. If you're not sure, in this moment, I want to pray with you. Maybe maybe you're not sure because you don't have a relationship with God. Or maybe you're not sure because you've drifted away from God and maybe you need to recommit your life to Christ. If that's you, right there where you're standing, let me lead you in prayer. If that's you, one, come on, if that's you, lift that hand on three. Two, come on, make the greatest decision you'll ever make. Three, just lift it up, just want to pray with you right there where you are. proud of you back here on on the right anybody else maybe somebody online with us but if you raise that hand I want you to pray this with us I want you to pray, pray from your heart from your mouth I want you to say Jesus I need you in my life I'm lost without you and I believe in you and I confess Jesus you are Lord come into my life forgive me of my sins And from this day forward, I'm not running from you. I'm running to you because you're my Savior and you're my hope and you're my joy and you love me in Jesus' name. Come on, Avenue. Somebody give God a big praise right there. If this message spoke to you today and you took your next step and made a decision to know Christ, we want to celebrate with you and walk this out with you. Simply click the link in the comments below. A pastor will reach out to you and celebrate the greatest decision you have ever made. At The Avenue, we know we're stronger together. Everyone matters and you belong here.